Moving on from the last video, let's take a look at some of the things that you can do inside of Clarice. In this video, we're gonna take a look at displacements. So let's go ahead and get used to the working inside of Clarice. So let's press Control Shift and C, and we will create a new context or a new folder. And let's select it and press F2 and rename it to import. So everything that we import, we're gonna bring into this folder. And let's go ahead and go up to file, import, and bring in our texture map. And we're already on my folder. So let's select our terrain height map and open that on up. If I double click this, you're gonna see that our texture is actually black and there's nothing in there. And that's because we need to actually set the uh, terrain to be forcing or the, the texture map to be forcing the luminance channel. Any black and white textures, you're going to have to come over to the attribute editor, scroll all the way down and under the single channel file behavior, we'll set this to force luminance. And then now you see our terrain texture actually pops up and this is what our height map will look like. So let's go down to our browser and bring in a grid. So let's do poly grid so you can right click and just start typing and it'll bring up the poly grid. Now in your viewport, if you have something selected, you can press F and it will frame it on up like a, a lot of programs. So let's scroll down to the bottom here as well. And under the size, let's set this to a little bit bigger so we can type in 1K and then M and press tab and 1KM and that'll be one kilometer by one kilometer. And if I press F, which is not working, there we go. It will frame this back up. And let's go ahead, set the spans to 1000 by 1000. I can type. So this will be basically the divisions of our train. So 1000 um, by 1000, um, like polygons, I guess. So if I set up our wireframe here, actually, that doesn't pop up. Interesting. So let's go ahead, just create a displacement. And this is what we need to actually displace our geometry. So with our displacement here, I'm going to take a look at this. So if I double click, it brings up our material editor. Now I actually don't like to work in this manner. I like to actually split my view. And I actually have a ultra wide and I would definitely recommend getting an ultra wide monitor for any sort of creative work. It is absolutely life changing. I love it. I used to have two monitors that I would work on with um, everything that I was using. Usually I pull up a renderer on one and my main program on the other, but the colors don't match exactly. Even if you have two monitors of the exact same thing without some major tweaking. So working with an ultra wide is just amazing. Um, and I definitely recommend that. But moving on here, let's go ahead and this, uh, just click that button and split up our view. And let's go over to this plus arrow or plus sign, plus arrow. <laughs> let's set the plus sign and let's come down to material editor. And you'll see that we have our material editor in here now as well. So the two ways that we can actually go about uh, setting our height map onto this displacement is we can either drag this in here or if we, just remove that. You can just select this displacement again to get that to disappear. If you bring that in and you click delete, it's going to, whoops, and you delete the texture map, it's actually gonna delete it from your entire scene. So don't do that. You wanna just reselect your, whatever thing you were looking at and it will get rid of anything that's not connected. So you could either drag it in there and wire that up to the front value, or you can come over to this attribute editor and click that button and just select your terrain map and it will automatically wire it up. So let's go ahead and set our displacement a little bit higher. Let's set it to, let's start off with a uh, hundred meters for now, but we need to actually assign this displacement to our grid. So you can come over to the attributes of the grid. So just select it, come over to the attributes and select our displacement. And you can see that we have our displacement here. But if I, if I zoom in a little bit here, as you see, if I start to rotate around, the top of our, dis our terrain is actually disappearing. And the reason for that 
if I select this, you can see that our bounding box is not including most of our geometry, if any at all. So we need to set that in our displacement. So we come to the bounds of our displacement and let's just set this to something a little bit higher. So we'll go 1000. Let's actually, let's set it a little bit higher. Let's go 2000 and then 1000 and 2000. So now with our grid here, you see this is way, way bigger than what we need, but it's uh, good for displaying our all of our geometry. So we don't actually have any issues now. We can see our entire geometry. And if I zoom on in here, so let's go ahead and select our little zoom tool here. This is actually called the pick fit. So if I use this and then draw over our terrain, it's not showing it there. I was expecting to see, is this? Yeah, okay, so you can see it here. There is this ugly uh, straight up and down part of our texture. So we wanna get rid of that. So let's go over to our terrain map and we need to scroll all the way down to the bottom and in the U and V repeat modes, we need to set this to edge. And if I set this on to edge as well, you'll see that that disappears. So certain terrain maps you'll actually have to do that. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on there. Some, uh, like if you're using maybe like Gaia or World Machine, this one was World Machine. I don't know if Gaia does it or not, uh, but World Machine, you have to actually set that to be the edge repeat mode so that that doesn't, act, that doesn't happen because otherwise you'll have that ugly uh, straight up and down portion of your displacement. So if I want to change our displacement here, so let's so back to our select tool, bring this up. Let's go into our displacement actually and bring this down to 1000 all around. And that should make our box a little bit smaller. Yeah. So if I want to change the amount of displacement that I have, we can set this down. If I set it down to 10, you're gonna see it flattens out quite a bit. Uh, if I were to set this to 1000, you're gonna see that it scales up a lot. 100 was pretty decent for this terrain. So we'll just go ahead and leave it at that. So that's the basics of our displacement. In the next video, we're gonna be, or the next few videos, I guess, we're gonna be going over setting up a tree that we can then scatter all over our terrain. And then we're gonna go a little bit deeper into the um, scattering and we will use different maps and stuff to actually control where the the objects are being scattered onto our train. So keep an eye out for those videos. I uh, got a lot more coming on Clarice. So if you're interested in that, make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss any of that. I also have Houdini tutorials on my channel and Cinema 4D and Redshift as well, but mainly uh, Houdini. And as we go forward here, Clarice is what's going to be focusing on this channel. So make sure you subscribe if you don't wanna miss any of that. But thank you guys for watching and have a good day.